Richard Lenski, a professor uh, at Michigan State University, has this great experiment been going on for the past 25 years or so. In the early 1990s, he decided uh, to take a common bacterium called E. coli and grow it in a little flask, just uh, a little bit in a little flask, and let it grow until it essentially used up all of the nutrients in, a, in the flask. And then the next day, he came in and took a portion of it and put it in a new flask with new nutrients in it and let it grow for a number of generations, six or seven a day. And then the next day, did the same thing. And the next day, the same thing. The next day, the same thing. And over the period of, of, what, three decades or so he's been working on that, the bacteria have gone through uh, over 50,000 generations. 50,000 generations. That's, that's equivalent to, say, a, a million years in the, in the lifespan of a species like uh, um, mammals, uh, say, a, a large animal like, like us. And there have been trillions upon trillions of different bacteria that have been born and died in, in his uh, flasks. And early on in the uh, experiment, he showed that some mutations were beneficial. So he confirmed that, yes, evolution can happen because beneficial, helpful mutations come along and they will outgrow other bacteria in the, in the flask and take over the place. And then other helpful mutations can, uh, can proceed from that. Classic Darwinian evolution. But in the early days, uh, although he could see that some mutations occurred and some bacteria grew faster, he didn't know where in the DNA the mutations had happened, simply because the techniques and the, and the machinery for doing so hadn't been invented yet. It was, it was hard to track down. All he knew that was that things were getting better and better. It was, it was great. But later on then, new techniques became available in science where you could determine the exact sequence of DNA and you could see what the mutation was that was uh, causing the, the uh, adaptation, causing the helpful change. And it turns out that he located dozens of different changes. But again, uh, most of them were degradatory uh, mutations. They either destroyed the function of a gene or they degraded the function of a gene, made it worse. And the ones that weren't kind of tweaked pre-existing genes a little bit, made it a little bit faster, a little bit slower. He didn't see anything like uh, the evolution of some new complex system like the flagellum. Nothing remotely like that. And so uh, I, I'm a big fan of this experiment because it, it does not put out a model. It's not a computer model. It's not a theory. What he did was let evolution